In 1939 and 1941, spectacular fossils came to light at the Sangiran Dome on Java, very different from anything paleoanthropologist Gustav Heinrich Ralf von Königswald had found there before. Around one million years ago, not only Pithecanthropus, known as Homo erectus, must have lived on the island, but other creatures as well. Sangiran 6 is a fragment of a massive jaw, but it had rather small canines. For von Königswald, this was neither a Pithecanthropus nor an ape. For him, the fossil clearly was the lower jaw of a giant human. He described a new genus Meganthropus, a fossil creature that sparked intense debates. Discovery and discussion of both mandibular fragments, Sangiran 5 and 6, was strongly affected by the war in the Pacific. Sangiran 6 was discovered in 1941. By that time, Weidenreich was moved from Beijing to New York. Later, he received a letter by Königswald with a drawing of the outline. He finally received a cast in New York, but without further comments by Königswald. Based on Königswald's letters and the casts, Weidenreich decided to publish the descriptions in 1945, four years later. This is his famous volume on giant early man from Java and South China. Also in Africa, very robust homonyms were discovered. In 1938, Paranthropus robustus was described from South Africa. On a visit to Africa in 1951, von Königswald was shown the diversity of African early humans, including fossils with teeth as large as in Meganthropus. Were the robust forms from Africa and Southeast Asia, living thousands of kilometers apart, somehow related? Until today, paleoanthropologists are puzzled by the finds from Java, especially the shape of their lower jaws. Meganthropus still remain as a big mystery. Not only the mandibles, but these cranial fossils tell us that robust and gracile hominids coexisted in Java more than one million years ago. This may indicate two species, Meganthropus and Homo erectus. Another hypothesis is that all these are Homo erectus, but it was a primitive type of Homo erectus in which males were robust but females were gracile. I think this scenario is most likely but we will need to study more to resolve the question. Until recently, there was no conclusive answer to the question, what was Meganthropus? An ape? A human? New methods are now available and affordable for studying key features in the fossil record, such as the micro and ultra structures of teeth. Structural characteristics on the dental surface reflect nutritional differences. Internal features are the result of developmental processes and evolutionary adaptations. Now we have the possibility that we use the 3D reconstructions we do in the computers also for simulating, for example, the chewing of a fossil hominin. So we can use the upper and lower jaw reconstruction and then we occlude the teeth. That means that we can let him bite. And the bite, we can analyze um, the contacts of the teeth from the upper and lower jaw. And that allows us to understand the reconstruction of chewing in terms of understanding what they obviously have chewed, whether it was a hard food or soft food, for example. The one big advantage of 3D animation is that we can um, leave the original fossils in the safe, for example. So we can play around with the models of, the, of those fossils without touching them and finally without destroying them further than, than they have been destroyed uh, through fossilization already. And this is a very big advantage. And also we can uh, video everything, which means also that we can communicate around the globe with the digital information and discuss particular issues concerning human evolution. A widely used technology to identify internal structures is micro-CT producing stacked X-ray images for three-dimensional reconstructions. The teeth from Zangiran were highly remineralized during fossilization. 
not even sophisticated parallel beam synchrotron microbe CT worked well for visualizing their microstructures. Clément Zanoli of the Université de Bordeaux finally applied for the first time neutron CT scanning with fossil hominin remains at the Technical University of Munich. Thanks to advances in virtual imaging, it is now possible to extract the internal structure in three dimensions of um, the bones and teeth of the fossils of our ancestors and to extract some paleobiological information. Would Gustav Heinrich Ralf von Königswald have been disappointed that Meganthropus was not human? Probably. After all, he called it Giant Man. But definitely he would be delighted that it was a separate new hominid genus. He was always convinced of the high diversity of hominids and hominins in Southeast Asia. But how many lived in Southeast Asia and how different were they? Hi Clément, did you see that the uh, wear pattern highly differs between Meganthropus and, uh, and uh, Homo erectus teeth? Exactly, and this corroborates perfectly our analysis of the internal tooth structure. Yeah, I think actually that uh, the collection of von Königswald uh, from the Pleistocene of Java in Indonesia really shows nicely that there was a high biodiversity in hominin. True, that's true. Now we need to find new methods to investigate further Meganthropus. Maybe these new approaches, you know, the new applications of uh, paleoproteomics and geochemistry can even help to understand much better where exactly uh, Meganthropus comes from. Thank you.